Hi everyone, welcome to Nature Walks with Ruth. Today we're going bird watching. I'll introduce you to a useful bird watching tool. We'll go see what interesting things we can find. And then I'll add a new entry to my field journal. Let's get started. After my last video, I headed back to the coast to see what other birds I could find in the ocean. I love to go bird watching. It's a fun activity to do together with a friend or by yourself. A lot of my friends will send me photos of the birds that they see from where they live, which is a nice way to stay connected, even though we're far apart. I found my friend the cormorant again, floating in the water. And as I zoomed in to get a better look, I noticed another kind of bird that I've never seen before. It reminded me of a penguin, and I've never seen anything like it. This is a perfect opportunity to use a neat tool called Merlin. Merlin is a bird identification app made by the Cornell Lab. You can either record sounds or use visual clues to identify a bird. This bird wasn't making any noise, so I went with the visual ID. I record where and when I saw the bird. Then I describe it, starting with the size. Compared to the other birds in the water, I don't think it was very big, but I don't think it was that small either. I think it was probably around the size of a crow, a medium-sized bird. Then I record what color the bird is. This one is black and white. Finally, I record what the bird is doing. Based on these answers, Merlin compiles a list of possible species. Is this a bufflehead duck? I don't think so. The head is a very different shape, and the colors don't quite match. The next option is a surf scoter. This is closer, but our bird doesn't have an orange bill, and it isn't brown like the female surf scoter. Let's move on. Now this bird has the same black and white pattern and the same penguin-like shape. Looks like our bird is a razorbill, a type of auk. Nice to meet you, razorbill. Let's keep looking and see what else I can find. With my camera and my binoculars, I spotted all kinds of creatures in the water. There were red-breasted mergansers, diving gracefully to look for fish, buffleheads, like the ones we saw on the Merlin app, and they are so cute. There was a common loon riding low on the waves among the mergansers and gulls. I even caught a glimpse of a harbor seal poking its head out of the water. It may not be a bird, but it was still really cool. Just beyond the far edge of the bay, I found a massive flock of birds. These are scoters, a kind of sea duck. They may look pretty similar from afar, but this flock is actually composed of two different species, black scoters and white winged scoters. It's easiest to tell the males apart because of the color and patterns of their feathers, also known as plumage. The male black scoter has entirely black feathers and a yellow bill, whereas the male white-winged scoter is black and white with an orange bill and a distinctive splash of white eyeliner around its eye. The differences between female scoters are more subtle. Both are brown, but the female black scoter has a smaller, rounder head, and the female white-winged scoter has a flatter head. These scoters migrate south from breeding sites in Canada to spend the winter here on the coast, combining together to form a massive multi-species flock. Alongside their scoter cousins, they dive underwater in search of oysters, clams, mussels, and more. Scoters barely ever leave the sea. They spend the whole day bobbing around in a flurry of activity, diving under the surface, then popping back up again with a clam or a crab. 
It's absolute Scoter mayhem. I decided to add the Scoter flock to my field journal. Instead of choosing a single species, I'm going to write about the combined group. The flock was composed of both the black scoter and the white-winged scoter. I'll use abbreviations to make it easier to write about and call the black scoter BLSC and the white-winged scoter WWSC. Then I wrote a short description of the scoters. They are a medium-sized group of sea ducks. Male black scoters have entirely black feathers and a butter-colored knob on their bill. The female plumage is brown, and they usually have paler feathers on the sides of their head. The white-winged scoter has a square-shaped head and white feathers along the edge of their wing. Those feathers are easier to see when they're in flight, but we can still see a thin strip of white poking out on their sides. Male white-winged scoters have an orange bill peeking out from their feathers and a distinctive white eye marking, although this mark can vary in shape and size, and I even saw a few birds that didn't have it at all. The female white-winged scoter is brown, with patches of white on its face. Next, I drew a sketch of each scoter species floating in the water. I chose to draw the male plumages since they were easiest for me to compare. As I mentioned, the two scoter species have very different head shapes, so when I'm drawing them, I want to make sure to capture that difference. This white-winged scoter will have a square-shaped head. While I'm drawing, I want to talk a little more about why I decided to consider this a single flock of scoters, even though there are two different species. It has to do with the way that they behaved. As I watched the birds bob around in the surf, there was no way for me to tell where the black scoter flock ended and the white-winged scoter flock began. They were completely intermixed. If another species, such as a group of common eiders, decided to drift into the same area, the eiders would stick together. Because these scoter species were so combined, it's safe to say that they were acting as a single, multi-species flock. For the sketch of the black scoter, I focused mainly on capturing the round shape of its head and the large knob on the top of its bill. I'm not going to worry too much about capturing the relative size of each species. They were so similar in size that it wasn't a reliable way to identify them. Finally, I added a few notes about the scoter flock. I saw a lot of social interaction within the flock, including between the different species. The scoters spent the whole day floating on the water, diving under the surface to look for food,
and flying between feeding areas, either alone or in groups. Flying low over the water and landing with a splash. And with that, I've concluded my Skoder journal entry. Migrating species don't stay in one place for long, so the flock I've been watching in the bay is changing. Over the course of the past month, I've spotted fewer and fewer black scoters. I wonder how long it'll be until they all begin to migrate back north. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. I hope you enjoyed coming bird watching with me. Feel free to reach out and let me know what you discover on your nature walks. See you again soon.